Hi YouTube, it's me again. Now to present today <coughs> my Unigo A43 as well as Dave does a uh, teardown a uh, couple of days ago and I just watched the video and here are my opinions about the uh, Unigo A43. Okay, I use it mainly for <coughs> current measurements because of some unique functions I think. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I reforming some very old caps which I bought very cheap recently. Okay, just these cans here. <coughs> just go and see what's written on here. So here we go, need to refocus this thing here. Okay, this caps rated 500 microfarads, rated 450 volts. Uh, the big can here is a little larger here. It has 300, oh sorry, 3300 microfarads. Rated the same, the same voltage, and these caps here is a little less big, but uh, um, yeah, it's underneath here. It's too dark for the cam, I think. But I read it for you. Come here, maybe. But I switch the lights on here and check this one here. Yeah, come on. Maybe see it here. I don't know. I can have the anyway, it's a thousand microfarads at 400 volts, <coughs> and they all together parallel with some, um, of course, here yes, some resistors across to discharge it them fully. By night when I'm not inside here. Okay, you see this? That's why I got the uh, <coughs> here it was again, not as big as the last time. Due to the the old caps uh, have some more or less uh, inside forming r resistors. <coughs> due to age or uh, non-working or uh, storage within some 10 years or 20 years as they have a date code over here <sighs> come on date code Ooh. here we go by the way it's hunters hunts capacitors made in England okay max ripple 5 amps Okay, uh, I th I th presume this one is made. I don't know if this is a date code that's very old. I don't think that is so old. Mm, I think it's in the 80s or something like. The others had the date code. Uh, it's the big one here has a date code on it. And I can read it as 279, and that's probably okay. <coughs> uh, the company is. Uh, Mitsuka. Uh, yeah, the big one, the big can is a Mitsuka. Hey, pretty well known to me as a. Uh, very good capacitors, high high voltage capacitors, and the the, the little cans are uh, Epcos cans, formerly uh, known as Siemens. <laughs> okay, anyway, I use this Unigo. Uh, we focus, come on. Mainly for uh, current measurements due to the movement of the needle it is uh, analog and therefore uh, if something happens within the caps uh, I see it 
and um, if I write uh, on a DMM digital multimeter or voltage meter which I got over here now we got a voltage across the whole caps of 361 it's running from my high voltage uh, <coughs> power supply right now okay what I want I want to demonstrate with the Unigo here is one good thing if I lower the voltage right now you see this anyway and this is the point where it's got this handy you can change it and then then you reverse the polarity and see what happened and now they are charged it again and here the current is rising and this is a cool thing of the Unigo you don't have to change the plugs here because uh, 350 <laughs> I don't want to touch it anyway so um, you can just put this here so and here we go and reverse the polarity of the whole hold it zoom out and you can see it here so I do it again just drop the wall the voltage and here we go this is the discharging and now it's gonna charge again that's one cool feature mm. Slightly more. so the next cool thing is I leave it here and uh, I can uh, shut off the power supply and I do discharge and I put this uh -huh, and this here we go as this is an active system you can't really uh, do any harm on the uh, on, on the coil on the of the meter because it's protected anyway so and now you see slowly we discharging the caps here and uh, we're running here at moment so, uh, it's about 30 milliamps maximum readout and we the refocus here we now at Oh, way better. We now at uh, sixteen. So and if I turn it out or <coughs> uh, switch it off, just see. Here we go. The metering had cut it had cut had cut <laughs> itself out. It's not um, from the uh, overloading or some like because the highest is three amps in this. <coughs> wiring and so it's not overloaded it is a uh, normal behavior of this Unigor because uh, if I just can work the switch of my power supply nothing happens this is very handy because you can now if we're not capacitors here you can uh, have some adjustments on your circuit or whatever because it's not under voltage because the uh, Unigo had cut it out any anyway so and if you just wanna operate it again you can put the this on uh, positive anyway so and engage it and here we go and the uh, voltage slowly raises across the caps
I need to do it for some more hours to reform the, the, the caps completely. Um, they should at least uh, draw uh, some about uh, 1 to 2 milliamps when they fully charged. But right now, the minimum current at about uh, 380 volts is uh, 6 to 8 <coughs> milliamps so I leave it for a while over here because if you put these caps right now in a, a valve amplifier or some like due to the resistance uh, in inside uh, the caps they go and heat them up and uh, maybe they overheat or uh, do some uh, other funny things that I don't want to have so I uh, reform these ones prior to uh, drive it from uh, um, um, <laughs> transformer output via a rectifier bridge because it, uh, if you put it inside this you need to be sure that the caps are properly working otherwise they, they may explode like uh, these are very big ones <coughs> you can see here this is my hand that's very very big ones and if they explode they do they leave a mess and I don't want to have this okay that's for now oh by the way as Dave shows some of his analog meters I got one really vintage one here we go it's a Taylor model 100A very vintage analog meter here we go and it's a really big one the nice cool readout analog style of course and it says come on cost a little today no mm. I read Taylor Electrical Instrument LTD South or Slow Box England. Okay, the downside of this one is the coil has burnt out or blown. Someone has treated this guy very bad, badly. I was into it and tried to repair it, but it was is is the coil itself. So it's beyond repair. I need to uh, replace the whole coil movement. So it resides on the shelf over there. Decent looks, and that's all I can do about this thing. Maybe sometime. In the future, I come around the same thing with uh, other issues. Mm, I don't know. Anyhow, so here it comes on the top shelf over here. It usually resides uh, some big ass potentiometers and nice old tubes. And here we go. This is where it used to stand over here. And that's about it. Bye bye.